Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. Now we all know what this guy is, but the rest of these are also taps, but they're all made for a different purpose. Uh, this guy here might be perfect for hand tapping while this one is definitely not. Some are great for specific types of holes and, and others are great for specific types of materials. And it's easy to spot the differences between all these taps if you know what to look for. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're talking taps and snow plows. You'll wanna see this. Everything for me begins with my setup sheet. So check this out. I've got a block loaded up. After tightening up those tools by hand, The important things that make one cut tap different from another all happen here near the tip, where the cutting face of the tap first cuts our threads. The angle of this cutting face right here, as it turns out, has a giant impact on what a tap can be used for. And to illustrate this, we need some snow and a snow plow. If our plow is set to a negative angle, which way do we expect the snow to be pushed? Hey, don't look at me like that. This is gonna change the way we think about taps. Okay, of course, blade tilted left, the snow goes left towards the bottom of your screen. Now, if we rotate the blade, giving it a positive angle, we expect our snow to pile up on the other side towards the top of your screen. And if we straighten up our blade, our snow is gonna escape in any direction that it can, piling up both to the left and the right of our truck. We can tell which way that snow is gonna be pushed based on the angle of our plow. And in the same way, we can tell which way chips are gonna be pushed every time we tap based on the angle of our taps cutting faces. Here, I have three taps, a spiral point tap, a spiral flute tap, and a straight flute cutting tap. Yes, the flutes might be different between these taps, but I'd like for you to ignore that for now and focus only on the tip of the tap, on our cutting face where everything important happens. Now, just by picking up a tap, any tap, and looking at that cutting face, we should be able to tell which way the chips are gonna go, up or down just like we could tell which way the snow was gonna go with our snow plow. A spiral point tap will force the chips downward into the hole. A spiral flute tap will pull the chips upwards out of the hole. And a straight flute tap will just shrug its shoulders and let the chips go up or down whichever way they wanna flow at that moment. Knowing which way those chips are gonna go is really important. It's critical when choosing a tap or when programming a tap you've already chosen. Now, if I have a blind hole, which just means you can't see through it like we can with this one, you'll have to be really careful if using a spiral point tap. With a spiral point tap, the chips get forced in front of the tap. And if there's not enough room at the bottom of that hole, those squished chips are gonna chip your tap or even break it. But not all chips are the same. Some of these materials leave long stringy chips when being machined. These long chipping materials, like some steels and aluminum, create this, this cut thread wire that has to go someplace, either out of the hole or deeper into it. Our spiral point or our spiral flute tap dictate which direction these chips are gonna go based on their axial rake angles. That's the, the, the angle on that cutting face. Some materials, like cast iron, are short chipping, creating almost, almost powdery chips. It's usually on these short chipping metals that we'd see a straight flute tap being used. Now, chip control is only half of our story. The other defining feature of our taps is the chamfer on the tip. These three taps show the difference between our three most common chamfer types, taper, plug, and bottoming. Now, here in the U.S., when we say plug tap, it's more than just a name. It's a technical term describing the chamfer on the cutting tip of our tap. Four to five threads worth of chamfer is what makes a plug tap a plug tap. In the same way, a taper chamfer is usually eight or nine threads long. 
and a bottoming chamfer tap has a chamfer that is about one or two threads long. This is the vocabulary of taps. The grind on that cutting face and the amount of chamfer before we reach a full thread is all wrapped up in the tap's name. Here is a straight flute plug tap. This one here is a spiral flute bottoming tap. And just from the name, we know that it's gonna pull the chips out of the hole and it's got about two threads worth of chamfer before it reaches that full thread diameter. This guy here is a straight flute bottoming tap with about two threads worth of lead in. And remember, any of these chamfer types, taper, bottoming, plug, can be applied to any of these tap styles. Okay, we know the names and what they mean. Here are some examples of why we might choose one tap over another. Now, this is our, our classic blind hole. This hole does not go through the part. The engineer has asked for three quarters of an inch of full thread depth here. But the tap drill is not allowed to break through. With a plug tap, we know that our threads won't be able to reach deep enough with that five thread chamfer. So for this particular threaded hole, we'll need to go with a bottoming tap. And because we are tapping so near the bottom of this drilled hole, we don't want to be pushing chips with a spiral point tap. So we're going to go with a spiral flute bottoming chamfer tap. Once again, the only way we're going to be able to tap clean to the bottom of a hole is if there aren't any chips in the way. With this spiral point tap, you're not going to be able to get the tap all the way to the floor of the hole without breaking the tap on those chips. Spiral flute, spiral point. So if this spiral flute bottoming tap works so well, why don't we just use it on all of our holes, even this through hole? Well, these taps are often more expensive, but beyond that, they take the highest cutting force of all the taps on this table. What's happening is if we're spreading the, the load over just the first couple threads, that first two threads of chamfer. That means that a bottoming tap is going to always wear out faster than a comparable plug tap. On top of this, a spiral flute tap is typically weaker than a spiral point tap at its core. The flutes on a spiral flute tap need to have enough room for the cut thread wire to escape, as well as for the coolant to find its way in. Because of these needs, the flutes are ground deeper on a spiral flute tap, leaving it with a weaker center core than its spiral point tap cousin. Now, if you broke a tap in the last year, chances are it was one of these spiral flute bottoming taps on tough material. It's a weaker tap. If you're breaking one of these spiral point taps, uh, you're probably going into a blind hole and didn't give those chips anywhere to go. Our spiral point plug tap is usually our first choice whenever possible. Now, it has a thicker core because the flutes don't have to be ground deep enough for chips to escape through them. Now, the plug chamfer on this tap is spreading the load and wear over four or five threads, requiring lower torque and lasting much longer than a bottoming tap. Now, for these reasons, we're gonna use a spiral point plug tap whenever we can, and we're gonna save these spiral flute taps for special cases, like reaching the bottom of blind holes.